Hey, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use custom connectors to connect APIs within your Canvas apps. So stay tuned. All right. So the first thing we do is we come to our, uh, when we're in our, Canva, our, our, our Power Apps uh, Studio, we're going to open up the uh, data tab and we're going to go to custom connectors here. All right. So in custom connectors, we're going to create a new custom connector. All right. Now we're going to do this in two ways. I'm going to show you how to do this from blank, and then I'm going to show you how to use an open API. So let's go ahead and do from uh, create from blank. We'll say create from blank. All right. Let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call this custom contact connector. What this uh, connector is going to do is it will connect to an API, and it will pull back contact information by passing in a ID. It'll give me the valid information for that ID. So let's go ahead and continue. All right, now we see that there's some information, almost walks us through a wizard. There's a general tab, security, definition, and test. And we're gonna walk through each one. Right then it gives us some, uh, some information or notification that we need to specify the host. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, specify that host URL. All right, so here's our host. Oh, well, that's not it. Try it again. Okay. And we'll paste in our host. And then we're going to paste in the base URL, which is just SMS functions. Because this is an Azure Functions, I've given it a name of this uh, SMS Azure Functions. And this is hosted within uh, Azure as well. So uh, we'll say security, which means security is set up, right? So we're going to go ahead and uh, say, no, we want to use an API key. And we'll give this parameter API key. And then the parameter name, we're going to give it what uh, the uh, the hosting the Azure hosting API wants. So we're going to give it this parameter name here, and we'll go to our definitions. Now here we're going to specify the action. So we'll select new action, and then up here we'll say get contact, and then we'll specify the operation, which is the same. It's just a get contact. Next we we'll go ahead and start looking at the request itself. This is going to be a git, all right? So we'll specify that this is a git, but we also want to give it the URL that it's going to use. So let me uh, get the URL here. So again, we said it was a git, and we'll give it a URL. Notice my URL has an ID query string. So right here at the end, you can see where I'm adding a query string on it. We're going to import that in, and look what it does with it. It's pretty cool. Gives a little error there, but then it, it understood what that query string was. It went ahead and added it here. And look, we can we can edit that information if we want, if we need to change it around. It went ahead and defaulted this to a string. So we're good here. Now, as we're doing this, this is building a Swagger file. And you can see that file being built here. So you can see we've added git, the git contact. Um, you can see where we've got the operation git contact here. So that's what basically all we're doing through this wizard, which is pretty cool. So next, we're going to specify a response. This is going to be the default response that we want to, uh, to get. So we're going to say, uh, this is going to be JSON. So three things we're going to get. First one is our first, first name. And we can give it whatever value. So we'll say name1. Again, it's just going to use this metadata here to specify what we need, what it's expecting to get back. So we'll say our last name. And we'll say name two. And then finally, we'll say email. And we'll just give it a generic. We'll say white at mail.com, which is, doesn't mean anything. Again, just an example. We're going to close out our tag here. So now that we've got our, oh, let's see what we forgot. Uh, we forgot this quote right here. All right, now we're good to go. So make sure you get all your quotes in here. The uh, the the the, the, um, the response is going to be uh, in quotes, and also the value, uh, the example of the values needs to be in quotes as well. So let's go ahead and import that. And next, we're going to go to our test. So to to get this to test, it's saying you need to create this connector. So let's go ahead and create it. And as this connects, one thing that we're going to need is the uh, the key. So I'm going to grab the key because remember we said this is an API 
uh, API key. So this is, this is how we need to authenticate with it. So once this is created, it's going to say, all right, well, I need you, you, you can't test it until you create a new connection. So let's go ahead and create a new connection here. And let's give it the key. All right. After it built it out, you'll notice that we've got our connections. We've got our custom contact connector. Let's go back to our custom contact connector section here and let's edit it because we still want to test it out. And we'll go ahead and jump this over to test. Now we can put in a value. So we'll say one, two, three. This should give us back a 200. Let's see what happens here. All right, we're good. Status 200. This is great. And this is the response that we're expecting to get back. My first name, last name, and then my email address at Pragmatic Works. All right, now let's build our app. So we'll come over here and we'll click app. And we'll create a, a new app. And this will be our Canvas app. As we provision our Canvas app, it doesn't have, know anything about data yet. All right, so we'll go ahead and make this a tablet layout. And the first thing we want to do is add some data to it. And we'll skip this. So let's go to data. Let's add data. Now this will look at the connectors that we currently have. And you can see that it's showing our custom contact connector. We'll click that. We'll say yes, we want to add it. And then let's bring in a button. So we'll go to our insert ribbon. We'll add a button. We'll click away. And then I'm going to add three labels. One for my first name, for my last name, and then a third one for my email. Let's just bring these down here. All right. Now for our button, we want the on click of this button to actually make the call and then return back some data. So let's go to our button and on our on select, let's type in a little bit of, little bit of a command here. So we're gonna say update context. Now what this will do is this will uh, create a, a local variable to our screen and we will call this var contact because this will hold the contact information that we're going to get back. So now we'll say custom and notice that we get some IntelliSense here. We can hit tab and now it's prompting us for the ID. You saw us add that ID in the URL. Let's go ahead and get that information too and then let's put in a string and let's say one, two, three and then let's match up some of our, our squiggly brackets, our paren, We'll do one more squiggly bracket and then it looks like a print as well. And we're getting a little bit, let's put that uh, end quote there. So what I'm complaining about. And it looks like we're good. Now for the test. I'm gonna press my Alt key. Instead of playing this right here, I'm just gonna run it locally right here. So I'm gonna hit my Alt key and I'm gonna hit my button. And hopefully we get some values here. Well, we didn't set anything, but we did get some values. And I can prove that to you. We'll just go ahead and say var. We're getting our IntelliSense again. And this was our first name. And you see Bear come in there. And we'll do the same thing for this one. We'll say var contact last name. And then finally, let's grab our email address here. So var contact email. And these were the parameters that we, uh, that we wanted back. These were the, the results that we wanted back for our contact. All right, that's great. We just did it from scratch. But what if you do have an open API that you either downloaded or you created? In this case, I created it when I built my Azure function and hosted it uh, within Azure. So we'll go ahead and let's save this. Before we save it, let's go ahead and delete this. So let's, we're gonna remove this custom contact connector. Now look, the name custom contact connector, connector is what we gave it, so it retained everything. We're gonna see a little bit of difference when we do this from the open API file. So let's remove it. And of course, we're gonna get this because now it doesn't know anything about our custom contact connector since we removed it. Let's go to file and let's save this. And we're gonna call this our custom connector connector app. And we'll save it to the cloud. And now while this is saving, what we'll do is let's go back to our actual uh, connector and we'll go to our connections. Let's remove it here. So we'll delete it. Yep. And if we had, if we had left it in our app, it would not let us delete it. <clears throat> let's move our connector. 
So we'll say delete. And now we have successfully deleted this. Now let's create one using our open API. So instead of create from blank, we're going to go ahead and import an open API file. Go ahead and click that. And now when we get to our, our, our name, let's call this custom contact connector 2. The only reason why we're doing this is to prove to you that this is a different connector and to show you a little gotcha that we're going to see. Let's go ahead and import this in. So we'll go ahead and grab our file. This is just a open API file, open API uh, JSON file that I created. Uh, this gives us metadata about the API that we want to use. I'll say continue. And notice that some of this information is already filled in. It now knows the host. It now knows the base URL. When we go to security, it also knows the, that we're using um, an API key for authentication, the parameter level, the parameter name that it needs to use, sorry, parameter label, the name that it needs to use. Let's go to our definition. It knows the definition. Now, one thing that it did, we're going we're to need to remove this right here because we want to call get contact for our operation. Let's put the summary in there. And notice that it's got our, our, URL, our, our actual URL that's going to that's gonna make the call. It has a parameter too. It looks identical to what we had before. Let's set it to a string. And again, we can look at that Swagger document, which is just the file we imported instead of the building in this case. So if we look at it, there's some information in here. So we've got an enum that was, was uh, uh, 890. That's an example of the data that we want to come in, all right? So let's go ahead and finish this up. One of the first gotchas that you're gonna come across, uh, if you try to run this, I had some problems doing it with the response 200 that was already added. So if we go back to our Swagger file, you can see that there's a response 200 already added with the example of, uh, of what, what should be brought back. Um, it doesn't like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to um, our response again, and we're going to add a new response. This one's very similar to what we had before, nothing really different. We'll just say um, first, first name, make sure it's in quotes, and then the value we'll, we'll name one, make sure that's in quotes, we'll do comma, and let's just copy that just for speed things up, and we'll do it name two, and this will be our our last name, and then finally we'll do our email. We don't need that comma there, and this is just going to be email, and then name two, and then we will close out our JSON. Notice it wasn't uh, letting us import it until it was until it was the way it, it wanted to look. Okay, so now let's go ahead and import that. After doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to our Swagger file here. And I'm going to remove out the existing one. So I'm going to go from 200 all the way across to the example JSON that I had. I'm just going to delete that out. I'm going to take out the space as well. All right, we're good. Let's go ahead and hide that again. And now we should only have one, and that's the default that's there. For some reason, it likes that. Now let's go to our test. We want to test this out. And let's click it one more time. You must create the custom connector before testing. Sounds good. Let's create it. And we're going to get a little error here. And I'm going to talk about what's going on. It's good that we're getting this. Uh, it says specified swagger uh, has the following errors. The type of enum value is integer, but it should be a string. So let's let's look at our code. Sorry, our uh, JSON file, and try to figure out what's going on. For some reason, it does show that uh, our our ID that we're passing in is a string. But let's just go ahead and give it a tick. For some reason, it didn't add those ticks in there. It's showing us that the JSON doesn't look good. Well, if we add these ticks, match them up, we should be in good shape now. Let's close this out. All right. Now, let's try creating our connector. And it likes us now. Okay. So as this is creating, it will, again, ask for our API key, which is what we gave the connection. So that'll pop up here in a second. All right, everything's looking good. All right, let's give it a connection. Let's say new connection. There's our API key for our connection. And then we're good. Our connection's been created. Let's go back to our custom connector and let's test it. In this case, we're gonna hit the edit button and then we're gonna go all the way to the test. 
we'll select test, our new connections selected, and now we can do one, two, three, and let's hopefully get another 200. And we're in good shape. 200 again, and the value back from our API. We're good. Now let's go back over to our Canvas app. And we'll hit the back arrow, and we've got our right where we left off. It doesn't know anything about our connector. Let's go ahead and add that connector in. Now this is one little gotcha as well. Remember ours is named Custom Contact Connector 2. So the old one's still showing up. In fact, if I click on it, it'll attempt to add it, but it says, hey, I don't know what you're talking about. So we're gonna go ahead and close this out. We've already saved it. Yep, we'll leave. And then we'll go to our apps. Since we've saved our app, we'll then go to edit. And now that we're editing our app, it will, and this is a fresh, you know, almost restarting the browser here, uh, it will now know about our new connector within our environment. So let's give it a second here, and we'll skip that. Now let's go back to our data. We'll say add data, and we'll go to connectors, and there's our custom contact connector two. Now this one's gonna look a little bit different. Import from SMS functions, which is that uh, open API file function app. So we'll go ahead and click that and then we'll add it. And you can see that the squiggly still aren't going away. Well, that's okay because it doesn't know anything about this new connector. So let's change our, we'll click on our button here and let's go to our var contact and let's take this code out here. So this will be SMS and you can see that it's already getting the contact. We'll specify that. Now this is something, another gotcha, so gotcha three. Remember our ID for our parameter. Well, the open API for some reason has it set up a little bit different. It doesn't need this. All it needs is just the number. So we'll take out the ID colon and the squiggly, line, a lot, uh, squiggly lines around it, and we'll strictly just pass in that ID. So it'll be get, uh, get contact, open print, our ID, close print. Now let's try this again. I'm gonna hit the Alt key and I'm gonna hit the button again. And we should get our results back. Boom. So we just used a custom API. We used a, sorry, a, we used a custom API, but we used a custom connector, connect to it within a Canvas app, first by doing it from, from scratch and filling in the information. And then second, if we do have that open API uh, key around, we can use that to, uh, to automatically connect to our uh, connector and uh, we don't have to fill in that information and, and speed us up a little bit. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, session and uh, I look forward to making uh, future sessions uh, down the road, future videos down the road. Thank you very much.